bowing our hearts, bowing our positions this morning. Because truly he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 We lift you up this morning, God, in the sanctuary. And we come knowing that you are our Father. And so, God, we come this morning. And we repent before you, God, as a body this morning. We ask you to wash us in your crimson blood. Father, we ask that you put life coal on our lips this morning. Father, everyone that is present this morning, we ask Almighty God that you open and touch their hearts even now. Father, for the things that you're about to do in this new season. Father, help us to shed the whole things that are not of you this morning. So we ask you to wash us this morning. Father, wash us in your crimson blood. Ah, oh, God, wash us so we are whiter than snow this morning. Father, we ask you to breathe upon us this morning. Let your spirit rest upon us this morning. Father, let everything that is not of you in this house, let it die this morning. So God, we say, let self be slain this morning. Father, we cry unto you this morning. Abba, Father, we know that you hear us. God, we come knowing that you are our Father this morning. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, uh, to take control this morning. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to touch every member in this house this morning. Father, lift the burdens this morning. Father, lift the fear this morning. Lift the doubt this morning. Father, we believe in the God in whom we serve. And so we reverence your presence this morning. Father, we praise. We bow down. Oh, we acknowledge your presence this morning. We cry out to you this morning. God, we don't want to be the same anymore. God, we want to live for you this morning. We want to be in your presence this morning. Oh God, we want to feel you this morning. Father, we can do nothing without you. And so God, we thank you even now. We lift up our heads to you, oh gates, this morning. Father, we praise you because you are our shepherd. We praise you because you are Adonai. We we praise you because you are God, fairest of all. We praise you because you are the lily of the valley. We praise you this morning because you are Jehovah Jireh. We praise you this morning because you are Jehovah Nissi. We praise you this morning because you are God Almighty. We praise you because you are mighty in battle. We praise you because you are worthy this morning. God, we praise you from our hearts. Lord, we worship you this morning. Oh, God, we cry out this morning. Lord, we know, God, that you are worthy. And so we say this morning, come down in your Shekinah glory. Set us on fire for you this morning. Let us burn for you this morning, God. Lord, everything almighty God that will take us out of your presence remove it now God let live fire come from your heavens oh God we pray this morning that you will take over this service even now oh God let no flesh be glorified in your presence oh God we pray this morning that you almighty God will hear our cry this morning Lord we look to you the author and finish of our faith we look to you, Almighty God, the great I am that I am. Oh God, we look to you this morning. God, there's no other rock, there's no other source, there's no other king that we desire to serve but you. Because God, we know you are almighty, you're all powerful, and so we reverence you this morning. God, we can do nothing without you. Of ourselves, Almighty God, we are failures, but God, we know we can do all things through you this morning we stand on your word almighty God because we know the God in whom we serve you are a great God you are a good God you're a just God so wash us this morning God cleanse us this morning God from sins omission sins commission God cleanse us this morning 
and let your fire burn. Let it burn this morning, God. Oh God, till we cannot recognize ourselves. Oh, let us be children to you this morning. Because God, you have said it. Oh God, we cannot enter unless we are children. So this morning, God, we cry out. And we say, have your way this morning. Lord, we want to see the goodness of the Lord. We want to see your goodness this morning. So God, we pray even now for the service, Lord, for every aspect, Almighty God. Empower those that will participate. Oh God, it is youth in action this Sunday. So God, we ask you to touch them. Touch the generation, God. Oh God, we ask that you consecrate even now. Give them the strength, Almighty God. Give them the wisdom, Almighty God, because they are the leaders of tomorrow. Oh God, we pray now that you will wash them with your blood that you will set them apart for your glory hallelujah father we thank you oh god even for the musicians right now touch them god afresh oh god let them play like the sounds of heaven god this morning let them be in tune with what heaven is playing this morning almighty god we thank you even now for the word that will come God we ask you to touch the one that will bring the word anoint a fresh almighty God let it be food for our souls almighty God we pray this morning God that you almighty God will take all the glory in our midst our God we do everything for your glory hallelujah and so God we thank you for what you're about to do we thank you for your grace in this house we thank you for mercy hallelujah even now we thank you almighty God that you hear our prayers hallelujah for thine is your kingdom the power and the glory father we thank you now and forevermore amen Our scripture reading is taken from Ecclesiastes 12, verses 1 to 7. If you find it, say amen. All right. Don't let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your creator. Honor him in your youth before you grow old and say, life is not pleasant anymore. Remember him before the light of the sun, moon and stars is dim to your old eyes, and rain clouds continually darken your sky. Remember him before your legs, the guards of your house start to tremble, and before your, before your shoulders the strong men stoop. Remember him before your teeth, your few remaining servants stop grinding. And before your eyes, the woman looking through the windows see dimly. Remember him before the doors, before, before the door to life opportunities is closed and the sound of work fades. Now you will rise at the first chirping of the birds and then all their sounds will grow faint. Remember him before you become fearful of falling and worry about danger in the streets. Before your hair turns white like an almond tree in bloom and you drag along without energy like a dying grasshopper and the caper berry no longer inspires sexual desire. Remember him before you're near the grave, your everlasting home, when the mourners will weep at your funeral. Yes, remember your creator now while you are young, before the silver cord of life snaps. And the golden bow is broken. Don't wait until the water jar is smashed at the spring and the pulley is broken at the well. For then the dust will re return to the earth and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Here indeed a portion of God's holy word we honor by sin.
Amen. Clap your hands and thank the Lord for the reading of the word by our young man, Brother Jermaine. Come on, I know you can do better than that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house this morning? It is youth in action. I want you to reach over to the person and tell them, beloved, it is youth in action today. Tell somebody, youth in action, youth in action, youth in action, youth in action. Beloved, are you here to give God some praise because he's good? Yes, 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 yes. Listen, the young people, they're going to be in charge. They're in charge this morning and you know we have to help them, right? 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 Yes. And so we're going to be getting into a mode of prayer. We're going to ask, we're going to ask Sister Patricia. She's going to be praying for about three minutes, five minutes for our young people. For our young people. And when we pray today, I am going to ask you to tap into the spirit and intercede. Especially on behalf of every one of, of these boys and girls. You see how beautiful they are? Yes, we are going to pray and touch the throne room of grace. Hallelujah. So beloved, get into the mode of prayer. Get into the mode of prayer right now as we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we come before you this morning. We reverence your name. We exalt you, Jesus. We honor you for you are God. There is none like you, mighty God. None can compare to you, Father. Father, today, mighty God, as we come, Lord Jesus, and we have separated this day, God, as young people, Sunday, mighty God. Father God, you say, young men, I call on you because you are strong. Father, you call them mighty God, not because they were male or female. But when you say young man, you're speaking to mankind. And today, mighty God, we want to put those young men before you. Father, today, mighty God, we want to give back to you, Lord God, what you have given unto us, Lord Jesus. Father God, as parents, mighty God, as aunts and uncles and shepherds, mighty God, as leaders, we recognize, mighty God, that they have only been loaned unto us, mighty God, for us to pour into them, mighty God, so that they can do your work. So today, mighty God, as they come, mighty God, attempting to give back to you mighty God out of what they have learned mighty God I pray today mighty God that you will sit upon it mighty God I pray mighty God that you will ignite it mighty God I pray mighty God that you will water it Lord Jesus and that it will become a seed mighty God that is planted mighty God like a tree planted by the rivers of water mighty God that it will spring forth mighty God and that it will bring for it much fruit mighty God and that that fruit will remain mighty God Father God today mighty God we come against every spirit of doubt and fear for you have not given us a spirit of fear God but you have given us love and power and a sound mind Father God your children mighty God oh God they will do exploits for you mighty God Father God even though mighty God they might feel mighty God that they are small Father God, we recognize, mighty God, that it doesn't matter our age or stature, mighty God. All that matters is your spirit. For it is not by might nor by power, God, but it is by your spirit. So this morning, pour out your spirit, mighty God, upon your young people. Mighty God, let them understand, mighty God, that they're not leaning on their own understanding. But as they come, mighty God, all you need is a willing heart. All you need, mighty God. God is for them to be available so as they make themselves available today mighty God show up for your people today rest upon them mighty God bless them mighty God father God let this be a remembrance in heaven mighty God that when the enemy comes mighty God and try to pluck out mighty God what you have put in them mighty God help them to remember mighty God that they belong to you and that once they make themselves available, they will do exploits for you. Father, we thank you, dear God, today, mighty God, for young people Sunday. For youth in action. Cover them under your blood. Build edges around them, Jesus. You have planted them in their schoolrooms, mighty God. For a purpose, mighty God. 
And this is just the beginning, mighty God, of what you are about to do. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We stand in agreement with them, mighty God. We desire to support them, mighty God, to encourage them, mighty God. We desire, mighty God, to do your will within them, mighty God. So, Father God, today show up like never before. Father God, confirm your work within them, Lord, as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you. Somebody just agree with that prayer that was prayed. Hallelujah. Somebody say, we agree in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, beloved. Hallelujah. 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 Today is a beautiful day. Praise the name of our Lord. We would like to welcome you. Praise the name of the Lord. Please feel welcome. Just tell the person beside you, welcome neighbor. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, on behalf of, uh, of Pastor David Lewis and First Lady Lewis. Can somebody just thank the Lord for First Lady Lewis? The leadership. Pastor Lewis of this house. Praise the name of our Lord. We're going to identify our first time visitors. Are there any first time visitors? We're going to ask them to stand. If you're here for the first time, we're going to ask you to stand. Or if you're here, beautiful, wonderful. God bless you. God bless you. Let's give them a cage him welcome, a special cage him welcome. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. And we love our visitors. Amen. We love our visitors. Praise the name of our Lord. Special greeting. We have birthday greetings. Is there anybody in the house that will be celebrating birthday in September? Sister Craig. Tuesday coming is Sister Craig's birthday. Somebody clap your hands for Sister Craig. Yes, yes. Sister Craig, stand up. Make me see you now. Yes. Tuesday will be Sister Craig's birthday. But look, beloved, last week, Tuesday, we had Sister Doris who celebrated her 16th birthday. Could you stand up? <laughs> so she looks young like she's 16. Somebody clap your hands and thank the Lord for Sister Doris. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you, woman of God. You look young. You are as young as you feel, and you are in youth service today. Amen. Amen, amen. Happy related to you. Praise the name of our Lord. And of course, happy birthday to everybody who will be celebrating in the month of September. Do we have any anniversaries either? Anybody? Any anniversaries? No? In September? Praise God. But that's okay. And, and we hope that we'll have many more. Now, young men, you, when, you, when you get married, we will bless the Lord for you. And our young women, when they get married, we'll bless the Lord for them. Amen? Amen. Special, special announcement. We want to remind everybody that on the 29th of September, on the 30th, what are we having? Yes, yes. What is it called? It's called what? Impact. Souls and territories. And we are inviting everybody to come out. This is going to be a very powerful meeting. Somebody say amen. 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 Yes, and so we're going to start 6.45 every night, every evening. We want this house to be filled because the first night on the Thursday night, we're going to be dedicated to prophetic in, um, uh, intercessory prayer and declarations, right? And we're going to be having healing and deliverance for the Thursday night. Somebody say healing and deliverance. Yes, so we are going to pray through intercessory prayer and declaration and we are going to experience a powerful wave of healing and deliverance in this house. So we are inviting anybody, if you know anybody that is sick, anybody that needs deliverance, God can do it before you know. But if they are in need and you know them, friends and families, I want you to pull them out. Bring them to the house of God because God will be here to do what? To heal and deliver praise God and to impact us so we're going to be blessed and on the Friday night we're going to have our father in the Lord our spiritual father Apostle Courtney McLean he will be here and he will be the night speak of a Friday somebody clap your hands give the Lord a praise for Apostle McLean he will be here and we're just going to have a wonderful time in the Lord amen Amen. Praise the name of our Lord. A very quick um, announcement. We want to just set some guidelines for us. Praise the name of our Lord. We're a young ministry. We just want to highlight to us the, the need for us to continue to reverence the house of the Lord. Amen. So we're going to ask when we come on Sunday mornings or any services, all our cell phones be put on mute. We mute all cell phones. We're going to also ask for all the children that come. We love our children. 
and we love our young people. But what we want to do is we just want to help to guide them and just to help them just to stay in order. So we're going to ask the, the parents if we, if I would prefer to have the young persons or babies to eat before they come to search, that's okay. Or to, or to wait until search, church is done and they can have something to eat. But if they have to eat, if they're small babies, right, and we have to feed them, we're going to be asking you just to get them outside. They can have their little juice or their little snack. We're going to have chairs right there protected for them and dedicated for them on the outside where they can enjoy a meal, right? So that we can keep the, the, the sanctuary clean. Amen. So everybody, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick up after ourselves. If you drop any trash on the ground, you shouldn't. But if anything falls, we do what? We pick up after ourselves because we have to reverence the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we're just setting some guidelines so that, guess what? Now, when we go forward, we know how to act. Okay? Beloved, also, we're going to ask us the unnecessary walking. When we have the welcome and the greeting and we're going around to greet, you take that opportunity to quickly use the bathroom if you have to. If you have a little baby and they have to use the bathroom, we quickly usher them. But what we want to do is limit the walking when we're having the ministry of the word, beloved, right? So we know our young people, sometimes they want to run about, but we can't have that. We keep them in hand and we limit the walking when we're having the word of God. Is that okay? Yes. yes, man, that's okay. Now, let us jump to our feet. We're going to greet each other. We're going to greet each other. And when you greet them, remember all protocols. We're still going to observe them. A, 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 a elbow, just bump them with the elbow and tell them that you love them. We love you here at Kingdom Grace. And we are glad to see you. We are so glad that you're here. We are, we are. to see you it's good to see you we're glad you're here it's good to see you we're glad we're glad we're glad you're here it's good to see you we're glad you're here it's good to see you we're glad oh we are so glad that you're here yes just wanted to share with you a little bit about our young people's group. The Kingdom Grace International Ministries Youth in Action under the banner, Young Royals, the Heirs to the Kingdom, is presented to you this morning. And we chose that name simply because we are part of Kingdom Grace. We are royal. And the thought that we are royal is going to tell us how we ought to behave. Royalty walks with their head high. They have a positive mindset. They are kind to others. They give of that they have. So that tells us every time we say kingdom, young royals, heirs to the kingdom, we are reminding ourselves and telling the world who we are, right? So I speak to you from 1 Peter 2 verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that is going to be our tagline scripture. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. At Kingdom Grace International Ministries, we desire to fulfill our God-given purpose as an organization and as individuals 
And with this in mind, we will focus in our Youth in Action on the development of the children and youth in our sphere of influence through our youth ministry. So not only the children who come to Kingdom Grace, but to every single child in our community that we meet, to those we meet at school, at work, at play. Now Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So we will, through this ministry, aim to foster the development of young people in the word, worship, prayer. We will help them identify their skills and talents and provide a supportive atmosphere for the growth of STEAM. We will contribute to the One Soul More campaign by sharing the love of God with those we meet at school, at work, in our communities, and on social media. We will be on fire for God and play our part in carrying the vision of KJIM throughout the nation. And we will make an impact in our communities, the nation, and the world. We will continue to honor the vision of our pastor and first lady by being active in service, building our gifts, giving of our time, our treasure, and our talents. And we declare that God's kingdom will come and his perfect will will be done in our communities and this our nation, Jamaica. Please stand with me as we honor the Lord and give a shout of praise for our young people. Praise the name of our Lord. We have a young person here who is going to be blessing our hearts with um, a quick word, Sister Felicia. Clap your hands for Sister Felicia as she comes. And beloved, I want you to please encourage them. Sometimes they're nervous in the car. They see you just sitting, looking at them, smile. Let them see a very positive face in front of them. Good morning, Young Royals and Cajun family. So this morning, I will share with you five verses in the Bible that shows us why we should serve God as you. It is very important for us as young individuals to be grounded and follow these words as it will help us to develop our morals and strengthen our values that our parents has instilled in us. So, my first Bible verse is Proverbs 22, verse 6. And this states, Train up a child in the way that he, shall grow, he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Growing up, I am sure many of us oftentimes hear our grandparents or our parents say, you must have manners because it will carry you far away. And this is how, this is one example of how this um, Bible verse is, what is it saying? Okay. Um, our next verse is Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And Romans 15 verse 13, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in, in, believe, in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So serving God doesn't exempt us from trouble our challenges, but having him with us gives us the strength to be with them. And my personal experience <laughs> through this scripture is when I was preparing for this presentation, that I was very nervous. Still nervous. <laughs> so, this is it. Um, also, Philippines 4 verse 7. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. Our last verse for the day comes from Isaiah 55, 8 verse 5. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, 
seek the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my higher, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And this is a verse that I love personally, because as young people, we should really abide by this, as to not allow um, other persons to lead us down the path of destruction. So, I really hope our word resonates with you and in your day-to-day activities you can make reference to these scriptures. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Come on, put your hands together and thank the Lord for our young sister Felicia with that word of exhortation. Wasn't it good? Did you get something from that? Very, very good job. Very. Come on, put your hands together again for our young people. Praise the name of our Lord. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I see a young preacher in you. I, I told her now that we see our evangelizing and preaching. You think it's a joke? My God Almighty, you did such a good job. God bless you. Yes. Sister Cassandra is a young evangelist in your daughter. She's coming along. Yes. Praise the name of our Lord. So, Sister Karen, our youth director, we're going to be supporting them. All our young people, they are going to be growing in the Lord and they're going to be developing. We're going to ask all the young people to stand right now. I know you, I know we, we, the adults, I know you want to stand to, but if you are under 25, <laughs> let us cap it at that. I'm going to ask you to stand up right now, right now. Look at Brother Marcus. Brother Marcus, you're looking, you're looking very sharp and splendid, sir. Somebody clap your hands and thank the Lord for him now. Yes. Now I want you to clap your hands for all of the young people today. Come on, clap them. If you love them, if you love them and appreciate them, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Beloved, and we have our young usher, uh, Nikanjo. Raise your hands, let us see it. He's our greeter. So when you came in today and you were sanitized, he blessed you by welcoming you to Youth in Action Service. And he opened the door for you. So we thank the Lord for, praise the name, our young brother, Nikanjo. We also thank the Lord for Brother Marcus, who is helping us to video, of course, and to, to capture the audio and the visual. Come on, clap your hands for him. Yes. And we had young brother Jermaine. Look at him, you see him short, but he's very, very talented, very, very talented, who blessed our hearts with the reading of the word today. And of course, who just close us off, Sister Felicia, with that wonderful, wonderful exhortation. I am looking forward to the next Youth in Action service. Are you? Yes, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be better. Beloved, they're starting off small and they're growing. Remember the word of God in Job 8 verse 7? Yes, even though your beginning is small, your ending shall what? Greatly increase. Somebody say greatly increase. Yes, our young people, they are starting small, but their ending shall greatly increase. Clap your hands and thank the Lord for them again. Hallelujah. We're going to ask you to get your offering in hand. And we have um, Brother Matthew it is. And we're going to get our offering in hand. Praise the name of our Lord. Hallelujah. Our young usher is going to stay here. Thank the Lord for Brother Matthew. Young usher, Brother Matthew. Yes. So beloved, you're going to get your offering in hand. And you're going to put your mind on assigning that need to the seed. Somebody say need to the seed. Need to the seed. Hallelujah. So while you prepare your offering and your gifts and your tithing, we're going to just sing reverently and we're going to allow those persons just wait on our instruction and we're going to call us to, to give. Hallelujah. <laughs> receive a word from the Lord today. Hallelujah. We want you to just put your mind in the place to receive right now because the Lord has something, a very, very wonderful word just to speak to our hearts. And even while we are in this season of newness, let us prepare our minds and our hearts to receive from God. I'm going to ask you just to quickly stand to your feet. The morning's speaker will be in the person of our youth director, 
Sister Karen Koff, who will be blessing our hearts with a word from the Lord. Somebody just put your hands together. Thank the Lord for her while she comes to minister to you. Praise God. Sister Karen, God bless you. on the stanza that says I call upon you young men because you are strong and the word of God is abiding in you and you have overcome the evil one forgive me if the translation I'm reading from doesn't match the one that's in your Bible in preparing for today we tried to focus on versions that would be easy for young persons to understand. So it may look a little bit different in your Bibles. You may be seated. Young men, I call upon you because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Now, if I were to lean on a direction, our pastor has told us over and over that September is the month for building and development of our ministry. And we are better to start building than with the young ones. We have a very good opportunity to be of service to this ministry. Because as we learn, as we grow, as we become rooted, we have energy. We have all our faculties racing. We have great ideas. We have wonderful solutions. We have great capacity. What a wonderful time to begin to serve the Lord. Brother Jermaine read this morning and he said, we should not wait until everything has left us, when our teeth are falling out and our hair has gone gray, when we have no strength, when we have no energy. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't come to the Lord at that time, but the amount of effort and energy that you can put into the work of God at that time is small. But when you are full of strength, when you are full of everything, the capacity that God has put in you, that is the time that I'm encouraging you to run come quick. Tap into what God is doing and let us see what we can do to build the kingdom. So my few words to you today is going to be entitled, Building the Kingdom, Your Gifts Are Required. Now, if we were to think about building in the natural, what are some of the things that we would do if we're going to build in the natural? We would first think about where we're going to put the house because the type of house we're going to build depends on the type of land we have because some houses can't go on a cliff because they will slide off and certain designs that you have in your mind you can't put it on the beach because the sand will wash away under the bottom so you have to think about the location so the land that you're going to build on is important what comes after the land? The design you have in your mind. And you begin to think about all the bedrooms that you want and where the kitchen must go and where must have the glass windows. And you have a fancy design in your mind. Then you begin to consider, hmm, how much it's going to cost me? Where am I going to get the funding, the material, the labor? Then you move on to foundation and structure. But guess what? In the house of God, the same consideration goes into us by the master architect, the master builder. He looks at us in all our glory. He looks at our capacity. Does she have a lovely voice? 
Does she have a beautiful smile? Does she have caring hands? He is a strong person. He has a vibrant personality. People are drawn to him. When he speaks, people listen. Those are the foundation things that go into creating our giftings in God. So, no matter how insignificant we may see ourselves, I can only smile with somebody because I'm shy. But you don't know what that smile does for somebody. That person may be going through a whole lot of things. And just the fact that you took the time out to bless them with that smile changed the trajectory of their day. So you should never look at your gifting as too small. I want to sing, but I'm not skilled. I want to write, but I don't have the words. Start at the foundation. Identify the gift, then hand it over to God. And as you begin to hand your gifting over to God, then he will begin to make ways in the wilderness for you. Somebody will come up and say, oh, sis, I'm doing a writing course. Would you like to participate? And it falls in alignment with your gift. But you won't know if you never take the step, if you never put up your hand and say, I want to be a writer. Nobody would invite you to participate in the course. So even as adults are saying to us, we need to begin to search ourselves, search our hearts. Look at the little blessings that God has been showing us. I mean, when I think about Sister Dorit, Sister Dorit is one of the blessings for KJ. Because my first visit here, it was her warm smile that greeted me. It was her welcome. And that set the tone for me here. And every Sunday, I look forward to seeing her smile. But guess what? It's not only affecting me. Because I see others coming with her. Because she almost never ever comes to church empty-handed. So can you imagine if without training, Sister Dorit is having this impact. Can you imagine when she begins to seek the Lord? And she begins to spend more time in the Word. And the anointing begins to grow rich on her. Can you just imagine the impact she's going to make as she walks through her community? Can you imagine when she goes to the supermarket and she greets somebody and she says, Bless you in the name of the Lord. What an impact that is going to be. We should start small with the graces that we have. So that's why I'm encouraging the young people today. It doesn't matter what it is that you carry. Can you draw? Can you paint beautiful pictures? What, what, what is it that God has blessed you to do? Is it to send a post on social media? Because all of us in here as young people are very connected to our phones. But even one post for the day should be something that magnifies God should be something that encourages somebody else. Should be something that lets the world know, I am different. I am a child of God. Something is in me and I'm sharing that something with you. I'm calling you to attention. Hello over there. There is something more to life than just waking up and eating food. Hi, there is something more to life than going to parties and the club. Hello, there is something more to life than sleeping and eating every day. Won't you become a part of that something more? And you know, what I would also want us to look at is the fact that no two gifts are the same. Even if we are twins, there is something that makes us uniquely different. There is something that makes us stand out. There is something that makes us special. So I don't want anybody to think that, oh, they have that sister over there so they don't need me. That brother is already shining so nobody's going to see my light. No. No. There was a special, special place created for your light. Somebody is waiting on your light. Somebody is waiting on your smile. Somebody is waiting on you because you, just being you, is their blessing. 
So when you hold back, you're not holding back just for yourself. You're holding back on the people who are waiting. There are some persons who, if pastor were to go to them tomorrow, they would not spare him a listening ear. But if Sister Cassandra smiles with them over a plate of food and invites them to church, they're here. Why? They know her. They love her. She has been good to them. So because of that connection, they are drawn to her. And because they are drawn to her, they say, you know, she always give me good advice. So I can trust her. I'm going to go with her. So not because pastor is there, we're going to leave the load and the burden on pastor and first lady. We each have to stand up in our own small way. Last week, Minister Taylor spoke to us and he spoke to us about the candle. Now, if I light my light and I stand in that corner and the room is in darkness, you will see a little flicker. But if everybody beside me begins to light up, the entire room is going to be lit. And we will have enough light to cover the building. And that is how we as young people are going to take Hey, Jim for Christ, or communities for Christ, or school for Christ, our nation. As we begin to light up, my light will strengthen yours, yours will strengthen mine. And as we begin to become that light, and we begin to show our light to others, then and only then will we begin to make an impact. And in wrapping up to close, what I would say to you, God had options. He has used angels time and time again to bring a message. He could have made a special messenger who had no sin, who had no flaw, who had no fault to deliver his word, to make an impact. He could have just had them do everything. But he looked at us and he chose us. He chose us to be a part of this great work that he is doing. And brethren, when we don't tap into what God is doing, when we don't use our gifts, when we don't use our talents, it's almost as if we're disrespecting God. Because he chose me. He chose you. He chose each one of you to impart something to you that can make a difference in this world. And if we don't honor that gift, if we don't take advantage of it, if we don't put it out there, we're basically saying, God, what you want doesn't matter. What you want is not important to me. So we now have to begin to examine ourselves. Because if we are sent to cage him to be greeters and we sit in our seat and we don't greet, what if Sister Dorrit didn't smile with me? Would I have felt as welcome? So that's important. What if we didn't have anybody to volunteer to be ushers? What if the musician said, Pastor, we can't accept your request? Can you imagine church with no music? It would be quiet. So, we would be cheating the church of God. We would be cheating the family of God when we don't show up. We would be shortchanging the house. And persons who need us and are depending on us will be missing their blessing. So, I just want to say to us this morning, as Romans 12, 4 to 5 says, just as the body has many parts and each part has a special function, so is it with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we belong to each other. So I encourage you today, Figure out what it is that you are here to do. Figure out what it is that God has called you to do. Figure out how you can make impact. And begin to fan that flame. Begin to nurture that gift. Begin to hand it over to God and say, God, this is my little. What can you do with the little that I have? Allow God to multiply that gift. Allow God to help you to grow because it's as you tap into him and you send on your roots, as you pull from the word. Are you at Bible study on a Wednesday? Do you pay attention?
attention to the fasting videos when they come out, even if you can't make the survey? Do you make time to be in church on Sunday? That is the water that is going to help us to grow. That is what is going to help us to begin to, to pull strength and to become stable. And not only become stable, but you know when you put a little seed in the ground and it's just a tiny seed and then one day you see two leaves coming up and then you see a stem and then it comes up until it becomes a beautiful plant. Let us do what is necessary to become the plants that God has called us to be so that we can bring forth our fruit in season and out of season. So, I say to you again, be a part of the building. Be a part of the building. Be a part of the Cajun Impact Movement. Your gift is required. Will you answer the call? Will you answer the call? Will you share your gift with the house? Will you share your gift with those you meet? And these are my few words for us today. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Karen. Somebody clap your hands and thank the Lord. Come on, somebody thank the Lord for that word. Beloved, let me, let me tell you something now. Sometimes, you know, it's not in the shouting. Sometimes you have to discipline yourself. And not even sometimes. We always have to discipline ourselves to sit and to listen to the word of God. And I sat there and I listened. And, and if you listened, I am sure you would be blessed. Because this word is very potent. Very, 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 very potent. I want you to clap your hands and thank the Lord. God bless you, Sister Cuff, our youth director, for such a very potent word to our young people. Young people, I hope you listen and I hope you grab this word and run with it. Run with it. Such a very powerful, powerful example. Just having your candle lit in a corner. There's a little flicker in the corner. But then the extended room can still be in darkness. But when everybody lights up, when everybody lights their candle, that is where light comes to remove the darkness. Beloved, the gifts that you have and the blessings that you have, it is not just for you and your small corner. It is for everybody to be blessed. And so, what a powerful topic. We are building the kingdom. Your gifts are needed. And it is such a very potent, potent word. Very, very powerful word, you know, beloved. Very powerful word. And you know, she said it so eloquently that, listen, when she came in, some of us, we think that, guess what? Now, you have to be from the pulpit to be a minister. You know what Sister Derek's ministry is? You know what our ministry is? Just being happy. Being warm. And she just came in and just be warm. And laugh and smile with people and make people feel welcome and love. And guess what? Sister Karen coming our first time as a visitor coming here to this church. You know what? She get up that day. And let me tell you, just like a lot of you, you say, you know what? Let me just go and find out what is happening at this church. And if she did come in and Sister Derek make up her face and frown and say, hmm. You know what would happen? She would just sit down there and say, oh, is so this place still all right? And let me tell you this. No matter how pastor preach like Paul and shout and jump and run around, she shut down already because of her first impression. Amen. Beloved, this is powerful, you know. So that is why when you come into the house of God, you must be nice and pleasant and warm because that is a ministry. Let the church say ministry. We're talking about building, you know. So every child of God must be warm. If you cannot love people that you can see, how can you love God who you cannot see? That is the word of God, you know. So we start off by being people of love and of warmth. That is your first ministry. Everybody, if you're a member of Kingdom Grace, your first ministry is being able to love. Don't it, Sister, Sister Craig? You must always look pleasant. Sister Patricia, always look pleasant. Yes, young lady sitting here, always look pleasant. You 
almost always because beloved you I'm telling you souls are impacted by these very small things sometimes you know why some of you cannot talk to your neighbor because you're always unpleasant you think you can go to your neighbor right now and invite them to come to church them lock all them grill and tell you to move from them gate yes how you can go and tell your neighbor to come to church or how let me tell you something that's why God don't ever use some of us because God is not going to move his spirit on you and empower you to go to your neighbor and lay hands on it because the prayer will not be received because the neighbor don't want your not out of your mouth that is why God will call somebody from all Portland and make them travel from Portland upon all three, four, five different bus because that person of their heart in the place and they are, they are people of love. God will pull them from Portland and carry them to St. Elizabeth or carry them right here to St. Catherine, right beside where you live and let that person from way over Portland come minister to your neighbor. You think that is right for have somebody from way, way come and minister to your neighbor? When you have the gift inside of you, when you are called, when you are the appointed of God. Just because we're not pleasant. My God Almighty, play my brother. I know you're listening. Play. Beloved, this is very powerful, you know. Because the word that moves something inside of me, you know. Because the small things matter. The small things, they matter. Beloved, I sit there, you know, and I watch the crowd, you know, watching, you know. I'm going to watch who encouraging the preacher and who just sit down and just look. From who sit down and look like they want to sleep. Such a potent word coming. And it's, even if it's not pastor, but beloved, let me tell you something. I'm telling you from now, you know, because you see, when the church gets bigger and we're growing, we don't want it. We have to make sure so we get it right from early. You see, whoever pastor empowered to come and minister to you, trust your pastor and just work with it and open your heart and your mind to receive from God. Such a potent word and someone will be even like so on the door understand what God has to do. Let me tell you something, beloved. Don't let the devil steal the word of God from you. Don't let the devil come and rob you. Don't let such a powerful word and you sit and some of you sit and you're behaving like you're not sure how the word of God is saying. Or boy, I wonder if I'm, boy, the word is so silent and we want to hear some noise and some fire. Let me tell you something. Sometimes it's not in the fire. Sometimes it's not in the wind. The prophet can tell you. It is sometimes in the very still, small voice. Discipline yourself to be sensitive to the move of God. When God speaks, he speaks in different ways. And if your spirit is not sensitive and being in tune, you'll miss your blessing. It is, beloved, it is carnal to be in one mode to receive. I wonder if you understand what I just said. It is carnality to train yourself to only be open to hear from God one way. It is self. That is, the, that is the definition of being carnal. Self. Yes. Yes. Beloved, I am encouraging you. Grab this word and run with it. What is your gift? We are building. This month is the month of building. September. Somebody say building. And we are not going to allow any gift to go wasted. We are not going to allow any gift at all to go wasted. So young people, the purpose of God that is in you, let me tell you something, we're going to draw it out. Because purpose has to be fulfilled, you know? Yes. Sister Felicia, you said the purpose of God in you, we're pulling it out of you in Jesus' name. Her first time doing anything like this, and didn't she do a wonderful job? And I tell you what, the word of God, it makes sense. It was potent. Somebody say, bless her, Lord. And her delivery was good. Lord, help me. Let me tell you. Beloved, you see, Pastor Lewis, I am not impressed by how much cheers are filled. I am impressed by quality. Quantity does not impress me. Beloved, God is after quality 
quality. It means that a quality member, you, of course, you start out by being in love. When people see you and they look at you, God can be pleased because the people them just see love and warmth on you. When people look at you, and Sister Craig, they're supposed to see the grace of God on you. They're supposed to, they can come to you and say, my God, you can't say a word of prayer for me? You know that? There are persons that you pass on the road, you know, that are suffering. And I'm telling you, the anointing of God is on you, and they know that there's something unique, but they don't approach you. You know why? Because of how you, you, your persona, you don't even look like you tell them good morning. And they turn away and they continue being broken. Do you know how many people you could have impacted? You didn't even have to preach a message. Do you know how many stars you could have in your crown if you were just nice? You don't even have to preach from the pulpit. Just a smile. Did you know you could impact your entire workforce? There are some of you God is calling. There is a unique anointing on your life to empower dozens of people. But because you're trapped in self, you don't even want to smile. You're not even, you don't even have a pleasant countenance. People at your workplace don't even want to talk to you. If you should change your persona, you will be surprised. The amount of people just start to gravitate to you. Because the call of God is on your life. People know when people are anointed, you know. No matter how they're in the world and people are wicked, they can look at you and know when you're a child of God, you know. Yes, no matter how a man bad, no matter how man a gun man, them look by you and know when you have the call of God on your life, you know. Let me tell you something. Every demon in hell knows the child of God. So when people are oppressed, and people are weighed down by the cares of this life. Beloved, it is your duty. It is your duty to ensure that you have a countenance that is comely. So that people can feel free. You don't have to preach a message to them. You just say, Jesus love you, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you just see a man, him stand up at the bus stop. Come here, my brother. And him stand up at the bus stop, you know. I'm going to tell you something. Gentlemen. Because you're in a church, don't mean say, boy, you have to behave like say you're older than thou. Thus, when you see the man stand up at the bus stop, you go to him and say, my brother, respect yourself. You know, say, God love you. Bless you, man. You know what that can do? But instead, we stand up at the bus stop. Come, come. Come, my brother. And he stand up there, you know, and you know him have an issue in his mind. Sometimes people, they are standing at the bus stop and they are thinking of stepping out in the road. They think of killing themselves. Them see a big, 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 big trailer bus come and them say, you know what? I want to step out. Tired of life. And we come like the master Pharisee and Sadducee. And we have our Bible bigger than all our bag. And it's under our arm and you come and you stand up. Hmm. And you don't even, and you have a prayer shawl with long like from it touch the ankle here and it come round. You never see them prayer shawl eh? When you put it around all your neck, it long from the ankle here, come round to all the next ankle. While the soul is there being tormented, you know, but you being in self, you're there with your Bible where big and your big bag and a broad hat and you stand up. And, and y'all, y'all sing. Y'all sing. Y'all sing to yourself and say y'all sing to God. When ministry is right beside you. Bless you, man of God. Yeah, man. Some of you, some of you let me tell you something. The impact that you want to see in your personal life, it's not going to happen until your light shines. The relatives that you're praying for to be saved. God will allow them to stay there and stay there and stay there until you witness to them. Yes. There are some relatives in your family. They are broken. Some of them are sick. And they're going doctor for years and can't be healed. And the anointing, the deliverance, you know, their deliverance is in your hands, you know. But you know what you do? You put a bushel over your light. How can a man put a bushel? Or a candle under a bushel. 
How can you hide your light? How can you hide your gift? How can you hide your calling? Sister Karen, thank you for that word. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Yes. So when you come to church, beloved, first order of the day, everybody must love. There are some days that I have that are bad. You know that pastor have bad days too? Or no, pastor not have bad days. Pastor have bad days. But let me tell you something. If I should ever come because I have a bad day and come and say, we don't need to worship today because I don't feel like worship. Day start bad. I could just read a scripture and go home. Do you know how I would grieve the Holy Spirit? Can you imagine that? Beloved, when you come to the house of the Lord, it no matter what is happening at home. Because if you don't worship, it's not going to change anyway. When you come here in this house, man, come and give God your 100%. Somebody say 100. Somebody say full 100. Young people, let me hear your ball out. Full 100. Full 100. When you come to church, give God your full 100, Matthew. Full hundred. Full hundred. Plug into what God is doing. So that your gift, beloved. Somebody needs your gift. Somebody's waiting. My God. There are so many souls, beloved, that are out there that are broken. Broke. When I tell you broken, you know. Beloved, if you should ever. If there should ever be a sign over everybody's head based on what they're going through, we would be surprised. Sometimes you'd come in church and you see somebody and they look like they're okay, but they know what is happening. They're in turmoil. And they're waiting for you. They're waiting for you, Sister Brown. Waiting for you. Some of you, your classmates, young people, your classmates, some of them are going through some terrible things at home. You think you know what trouble is? If you ever hear the testimony of some of these little kids, what they have gone through at the age of 10, they have lived a life that some of you at 50, your, your, your trouble don't even compare to it, the 10 years that they have gone through. The trauma. Because I'm not telling you anything because I know there are some cases that I hear about that when I hear about it, it moves my belly. You ever hear something that you feel something move inside of you? You want, you want just ball and say, Lord, do help. Children, 10 years old. Some of you locked up inside of your young people is the, is the purpose that God has placed in your heart to help your schoolmate. What you hear and what, you, what is imparted upon you here when you come to church is not for you to just laugh and smile and have a good time, but it's for you when you leave here to impact somebody. You can't be young and living for Jesus and afraid and shame of Jesus. Did you know that a lot of our young people today, they don't, when they go to school, nobody knows that they are Christian? Did you know that? Because of peer pressure, they don't even want young, they don't even want their friends to know that I am safe. Peer pressure is a spirit from hell. My God. But today, we thank God for such a word. Somebody say, Thank you, Lord. Beloved, stand with me. We must witness to everyone we meet. In every song we sing, we must tell them of our soon coming King. Somebody sing. We must work while it is day, spreading the word of God. As we walk along the way, we live to do His will, spreading the Word 
of God as we witness throughout the hills. We must, we must witness to everyone we meet in every song we sing. We must tell them of our soon coming King. Oh, we must witness to everyone we meet in every song we sing. We must tell them of our soon coming King. Yes, Lord. We desire to work for you, though the task be great. Father, the purpose, the gifting, the calling that you have placed in our lives, we come and we give them back to you. Lord, like the woman Hannah, she purposed in our heart that if you, Lord, should bless her, if you should give her that gift of a child, she will give it back to you for service. And so today we pray purposely and fervently that Lord for each and every one of us the purpose that you have placed on our life to help the giftings and the calling the talents that you have given to us individually we purpose Lord and we covenant with you today we vow in our hearts that Lord we will give it back to you so that your name can be glorified Father, we will give our gifts back to you so that your kingdom can be built. We will give, oh God, your gifts back to you so that somebody's soul can be saved. Father, your word declares that the harvest is plentiful. It is ripe, it is ready, but the laborers are few. But Lord, we purpose in our hearts today that Lord comes what may we will serve you comes what may oh God purpose will be fulfilled through me purpose will be fulfilled through me so that some soul can be saved your word declares God that he that winneth souls is wise and so we pray that the spirit of wisdom will be on us today that we will focus to know that God that is not in the strength of our hands. It's not the strength of our feet. But Lord, it is the gift that is placed in us. The purpose that you have given in us. If we activate it, it will work on our behalf. And so Father, we stir up the gift right now. We stir up that gift in our young people. The young minds. Our youth in action. Father Paul, he declared to Timothy, stir up that gift gift that is within you and so father in that same spirit we stir up the gift and callings and talents in our young people first oh god we dedicate them to you right now because today is youth in action young royals we put each and every one of our young people before you today lord and we declare every gift and calling to be stirred in them Father God, you know you've put gifts in them to sing, gifts in them to be orators, gifts in them, oh God, to speak, gifts in them, powerful gifts, oh God, to minister to people, to lay hands on them, talented, oh God, to sing, to dance for you, oh God, to proclaim you, oh God, in speech, in drama. But Lord, we pray right now that that gift will be activated and they will be empowered with boldness and faith to rise up, to work for you. Not just our gifted young people, but Father, or adults. We put each and every member in kingdom grace before you, Lord. And we say, Father, we will not sit on our gifting. But Father, we will build. We will avail ourselves to serve you. Oh God, right now I pull out every gift, every calling. We declare them to be activated. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost sit on your people. Those of us who have been doing, we pray that God, they will be empowered to do more. Those who have been doing little, we pray, oh God, that your spirit will move on them, that they will do much more. 
even though God there in there in the beginning might be small, we declare God that when purpose is activated, our ending shall be increasingly great. Akatabaraba. Father, we thank you right now for this powerful word that was spoken. Lord, we put each and every one of our young people that took part in our service, even those that just visited, we put them back in your hands, Lord. We pray that you'll continue to hold them. We pray that your providential care will be upon them. We know that the enemy wants to snuff out their lives and kill them. But God, we declare our young people to be preserved by the blood of Jesus. When they're away from home and they're at schools with their friends and peer pressure is at its highest. Oh my God, when their minds are under attack from the plans of the enemy, we pray now, Lord. We intercede for them. We stand in the gap for these young people. That Lord, your strength will be made perfect in their weakness. Father, we speak against those dissenting voices. Oh God, that will try to shame them and disparage them for being a child of the king. But Lord, we pray that their young minds will be encouraged, will come to the knowledge that being a child of the king, being a young royal is royalty. They are special. They are peculiar. My God. We put them again in your hands and we declare that the gates of hell shall not prevail against our young people. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the saints of the living God. The gates of hell shall not prevail against our new converts. Somebody say amen. Ayanda brakushka. Yes, yes, the gates of hell shall not prevail against our leaders, 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 heads of departments. The gates of hell shall not prevail against our leaders. Yes, yes, Lord. And we put ourselves before you again. Continue, oh God, to make us over. Continue to break us and mold us and make us and fashion us into what we ought to be Lord so that your will can be done and your name can be glorified in Jesus name amen before we close is there somebody here that wants to give their life to the Lord you might be a first time visitor a second time visitor and you haven't given your life to the Lord as yet I'm going to ask you if you want to come. Now is the moment for you where you can come. We want to lead you to Christ. If you want to be baptized. Is there anybody here today that you want to be baptized? If you're here, you want to be baptized. You can come also. Praise the name of our Lord. This is the opportunity for you. Today, we'll never want to end a service without giving a soul the opportunity to be saved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody lift your hands. Hallelujah. Pray this prayer for a benediction. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and my redeemer. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. And we love you. Just tell somebody you love them before you go. We love you. We love you with the love of the Lord.